That was clean. Ready? Hmm? Uh, what was I saying again? Yeah, so I finally found some sunscreen that I thought wouldn't give me skin cancer. Nice. Um, I started reading the back of it, the instructions. I had to throw it out midway through the instructions. It said apply liberally. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I appreciate everybody's views, but okay. I think some people think I lean a certain way. <laughs> Brother, you don't lean. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? That's full body weight. <laughs> You're in uh, it. Uh. That's another okay. one. It's another one. It's another second office. With your humble, hot, horny host. What? I'm Alec George. This is Doc and Sody. I appreciate alliteration, but come That's on. That's all I had off the top. Doc and Sody, what's going on? Oh, man. Yeah, actually, a pretty good good start to the week. That's good. I wasn't going to ask about your week. Because I've actually, I've actually got another question for you guys. Um... Going down, strolling down the grocery aisle, right? Every now and again, you pass a food item when you're like, "Who, who the hell approved this? That looks awful." Right? I'm sure a few things are coming to mind right now. Everything. Yeah, I mean the whole grocery store. Everything. Okay. Examples: Chips Ahoy, Doritos, Lay's. Anything with awful? Ve- anything with vegetable oil, canola oil, any seed oil. I don't want to hear it. Do you know that stuff was made for cars, right? Sody, I'm not doing. This. I'm, turn, not, I'm not doing this for you to balloon <laughs> around. Turn recycled. I'm farms. not doing this for you to pretend that you're not one of the greatest snackers of all time. I was the Dude. artist formerly known as Hambone. Okay, walk, walk, walking walking down the snack halfway aisle halfway to death, and Even the doctor that, said, okay. "Straighten up, young man." Even as Hambone walking down the aisle, I'm sure there was a few things where you're like, "Nope." Hambone did not have that opinion. <laughs> Hambone said, "I bet if I smash half a bag of that with that." And then drizzle in some melted marshmallow. I could make something. Okay. A snack so, machine. I don't know what just happened. Who's that? Sour, Sour Patch, Patch Oreos. Oreos. Hell yeah. Talking about a combo. Literally. You know Bring I mean? it here. Okay. I'll eat one. Here we go. Here we fucking go. That sounds kind of good. Does it? I was like, that, I, I couldn't believe it. You got to read the list. So what is it? What am I eating? What am I Sour about pa- to? Sour Patch Oreo. You want the Sour Patch Kids flavored cookie and cream with colorful inclusions. Okay. Limited edition. Hell so, yeah. It's okay. special then. You know why it's limited, right? Because it probably sucks. <laughs> yeah, nobody's going to buy that extendedly. Um, After that, I'd love for you to hand me the box. Okay. Or the package. I'd like to read some of the ingredients while we eat it. Cheers. I, oh, yeah. Cheers. Touch tips. Here you go. Glucose. Mm, yeah. We didn't touch <laughs> All right, let me see that package. I want to see exactly what I'm putting in my body. Tastes like a golden Oreo so far. No, I got a sour patch for sure. Never mind. There it is. I don't like it. Dude. It's not bad. It's a frosted animal cracker on steroids. Mm Mm-hmm. That's what it is. It's a frosted animal cracker. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm getting. You know what's weird? And I can't... Number one ingredient. What's your guess? Oreo. No, man, these aren't raisins. Gluten. No. We Come on, man. High fructose corn syrup. Sugar. <laughs> hmm. Number two, unreached or unbleached enriched flour. Oh, hey, at least it's God, not bleached. That, that is, that's a sugar bomb. Man. Niacin, reduced iron. We all just got diabetes. Uh, riboflavin, folic acid. Mm-hmm. I think I'm Palm oil, tooth. soybean and or canola oil. So those, and are. And are. <laughs> those were also designed, like I was saying, those were designed for engines, right? Mm-hmm. And then World War II happened. People found out you can feed this to other people. <laughs> and they did. And they continue to. It's nuts. And now it's in Sour Patch Oreos. Did you know in like 1950, people consumed like 13 pounds of sugar a year? You know what it is now for the average American? Don't follow up a Sour Patch Oreo with bourbon. 175 pounds of sugar a year. Sugar and toothpaste, dude. Sugar and toothpaste. I believe that. You want to know why you're going to need dentures? Because the people that own the dentist company own the toothpaste company. That's, man. That's capitalism. Do you know what's insane? Is the number one ingredient sugar, but they also have high fructose corn syrup in here. And that's. Why do you need both? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Like, that's the same thing. So you know, (laughs) double whammy. And then all ingredients go on bags, right, George? Mm -mm. The first listed, why is it listed first? Because it's the, the most. most. Exactly. Yeah. So the number one, the most in this whole thing, is sugar. 
just sugar. <laughs> Contains a bio <laughs> and then engineered at the end, like tenth, food ingredient. Finishing 10th. Still qualifying, you know, for next year's race. High fructose corn syrup, which is the sweetest fucking thing in the world. Natural and artificial flavor. Blue 1, yellow 6, red 40, yellow 5, red 40 lake, yellow 5 lake. And all those are banned in red, Europe. Yeah, <laughs> red 40 is banned in Europe and Asia because it, it causes... Kills you. Hey, no red number well, it five. destroys your brain, no your red nervous five. system. No red five, though, so how bad can it be? Red 40 lake, though. Yeah. That's, mm. You know what red 40 is? It's 40 ounces of red five drawn out of a lake they dumped it in. It's not, but... <laughs> it is. <laughs> 100. We're not a news source, who guys. Wants an, who wants another? God damn it. I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's seriously, it's sugar. I'm out. It's straight sugar. I'll have pretzels. That said, a plain golden Oreo is maybe my favorite cookie. Hmm? A little bit of milk? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Over a double, I mean, double stuff for me. No, I can't do double stuff. Really? No. I do the thin ones, crush them up, put them in a cereal Believe bowl. it or not, too creamy. Your that, That's your favorite cookie. Perhaps. I'm not. You asking for another Rushmore 5? Stop. Cookies? Stop. Don't take them on, dude. Ow. Ow. All right. Guys, it's been uh, it's been quite the week. Doc, for us here week? at the second office Doc. and, of course, for the Timberwolves as well. How was Doc's week? Who have lost three in a row. Doc. We're he's, not asking. He's We're not asking. Am. We're not he's, asking. He's train tracking this. We're not asking. We're doing you a favor, and we're going have... a little off script. It's great. I took Lily to the zoo. Damn it. Is it allergy season? Oh, you went to the zoo? Yeah. What would Lily think? Dude, she runs around. We have a membership because she just Minnesota? loves it. Yeah. Emily and Sick, I went to the dude. zoo. Where's the invite? Rare. Let's do like we a- We actually did. We went to Como Zoo. Let's do like a brunch. We'll go at like 10 o'clock. We'll go to Fat Nats, get an omelet after. Dude, she rode the carousel for the first time. Ooh, I'm was terrified. Memory. Yeah, and then wasn't, was and it was say. like it's good. It's How like, many rotations before she was like, "This is fine." Once it started moving, she was good. Then loved it. But immediately. waiting was like, "What are we doing? What am I on? Get me off of this, dude." Such is life. Anticipation. Man. I've yeah. seen horses. This isn't a horse. Yeah. <laughs> like seriously. Yeah. That's once great. it didn't take off like a Kentucky Derby, she was like, yeah. "All right." Yeah. She's like, "Oh, we're I can ride this one. We're not going to die." That's we're great. Good. That's great. Okay, so been quite the week here at the second office for the three of us as well as for the minnesota timberwolves who have lost three straight Ow. <laughs> why would you play that why would you play it it's a sad ah woo no it's not no yeah, you're right that wasn't okay well, you know you know what happens to minnesota I, i'm just i'm trying to manifest here you guys I'm you know try, the last... i'm trying to manifest because it's still hey after six after five games if you told me the series was three two in favor of either one i'd be like yeah i i believe that you okay Table's getting longer. They grow in the heat. Can you name the last two Minnesota sports franchises that went up two games in a series and then lost the next three? Both times the Minnesota Twins. Won 87 the World and series. 91 Twins. Oh. It's happening. Don't count them out. Don't count them out. We're going to come. We're going to. So we need a Twins button, which I think might just be like Doc and I can just say hey at the same time. And you turn that into a button where it's just two guys going. Hey, twins, get it? If we've got a, a woo, twins could just be two guys going one, two, three. Hey, hey. you know, I'll think about it. All right, well, we just but we it. got it now if we want it. So cool. Or we can take some sausage and just slap it on. Or you could just have two guys yeah. go. Yeah. We're twins. <laughs> <laughs> and it's you guys who aren't twins. This is why we need time for creative discovery I'm director meetings because I'm with you. If I do it on air, did you guys watch? Any of these last three wolves losses? Yeah. Did you see what time yeah. they started? Yeah, I know. No, I did. Hmm. Yeah, I still, I, I still battled through even last night with, uh, ah, you know, um, as amazing as the wolves looked for the first two games, and as dominant and unbeatable as they looked, that's completely flipped on its damn head. And now Jokic decided he's like, okay, time to show everyone I'm the MVP again. And holy shit. If, so if so, first of all, I'm sorry if if Jokic just does this when he decides to, they're sweeping the conference finals and the finals. Yeah. The team doesn't miss. They play so confidently. It's crazy. One team just looks so much more comfortable and confident in their abilities. They play like a championship team. They didn't the first two games for some reason. I like to think that was our defense. I still don't think our defense has been awful. They're hitting every damn shot. But also. Our offense can't figure it out. And our defense, they thrive off each other, right? Offense and defense. And we can't figure out the damn offense. This brings to mind WrestleMania. 
for me. I believe it was Undertaker's funeral, if you guys remember this, um, where John Cena, I believe, walked up to pay his final respects, kind of like the Timberwolves, kind of like Anthony Edwards walking up to the old goat and saying, hey, man, sorry to see the position you're in, you know, which is not where I'm at. I'm doing way better than you are. Yeah. And he leans in to give him a hug, and Undertaker reaches up. Is Doc, am I accurate? Sounds good. But he Undertaker reaches up, grabs John Cena, and all of a sudden a fight ensues. And I can't remember who wins that, which is great, because I don't know who's going to win this series. Doc, you follow, don't you? Isn't that a thing? That's a meme. I don't know, dude. I've seen the meme a hundred times. I took a good break from wrestling for a while. Cool. So I, that must have been during my break of wrestling. Well, it couldn't have been that long. You got a kid, don't you? Yeah. Oh, I don't, don't know. I'm not following. I don't get it. Wrestle. I was. I'm just. Com, I'm, I'm just confused at how you're able to see John Cena. Yeah. Most people can't see him. Yeah, he came from out of nowhere. Well, either well, way. I, I, okay, you guys don't. Never mind. No, I'm. I was with you. I was following along. It's Listen, great, man. Cena's stone cold. Yeah, there it is. Can't see. Yeah, can't Cena, see. <laughs> Cena's stone cold. No, he's um, not. Goldberg, baby. So also, Do you smell what Cena's cooking. <laughs> yeah, sting that. <sighs> So game four, I also felt like was super weird. And we could have, yeah, well, sure. He, Rudy did that again, got fined for it. And Chris, Chris Finch even had something to say to the refs, which he usually doesn't, which I thought was great. Um, game four is super weird. So Nuggets, again, shoot at a super high clip. Aaron Gordon went 10 for 10 and finished 11 for 12. He's never done that in his damn life. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. That night. Pre- previous to that night. Prior to. Prior to that yeah, night. Yeah, okay. I was like, <laughs> you just said, <laughs> anyway, sorry. You know what I mean? I got to move this cable. Um, the worst of the three Holiday brothers shooting, da- like, mm. at one point was 9 of 13 from 3 in the series. We play Cat instead of Nas in the fourth to close out game four. Kyle Anderson got way too many damn minutes. Um, weird coaching decisions. Nobody beside Ant could show up. It took one other person to show up, and we would have had it. Um, So I feel like we let game four slip on... In multiple ways. God, man, you're just Dr. Evil right now. Yeah, he is. Yeah. So one one thing I'd like to point out, and it's not a it's not a jab, but I feel like when certain players on our team are faced with adversity, including certain tall ones that may have mm-hmm. be, still be coming back from an injury, which I can understand would be a monumental sure. feat. Sure. And I'm not saying I can do it. I'm not that gifted. But when faced with adversity, there's a fight or flight mechanism mm-hmm. inside the human brain. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Ant's got the fight. Yeah, He's like, oh, double team, that means I can power through. If I can't, that means somebody's open. Mm-hmm. Find the option. And I feel like some guys take their giant wingspans, which may or may not be close to seven feet. And they a couple guys in the squad with that kind of wingspan. Mm-hmm. But they just put them down by their side. And then while the ball's going the other way... They're behind it. Yeah. Jogging. Yeah. And then they're like, boom, they score. Come mm-hmm. back. Still jogging. Boom, a lot they of, score. A lot of transition points. For, Stuff to play five on four. Yes. Ask the wild. Mm-hmm. A lot of, lot of transition points. Come on. Yep, there were a lot of transition points. Should Which we, comes should, from laziness. Should we talk about cap? I agree. Yeah, it's it's a tentativeness. It is. Mm-hmm. It's, Unfortunately, it's focus. I hate to do it because I think he's super talented Listen. when he's dialed and when he's got it. Very happy to talk about cap. Let's he go. is... Like a guy like me that's coached kids, he is that kid on the court that has been good forever. Mm-hmm. He knows he's good. He doesn't have to prove it to anybody. Number one overall pick. Rookie and the, the last year. thing he wants to do is try so hard that if he fails while trying hard, people will see that he might not be that good. See, I, I so see. So anytime it's tough, you just quit. Because then it's like, oh, your excuse can always be, you know, I was out of it. I was this. I was that. And it's just. To me, it's bullshit. I, I think there's a little bit of that. I also think he, for whatever reason, decides in moments and in games. He was good for a couple playoff games. Uh, it's, it's like one game a series, it seems, going back um, a couple years even, he where he decides this is a game or now is the moment in the game where I'm the guy. Yeah. I'm the damn guy. Mm-hmm. And he thinks he can just overpower everyone and just do it with, with will. He becomes predictable. He drives into four guys with his damn head down. Yeah. He won't get the foul call when he does that because he looks out of control. He's flailing everywhere. Yeah. And he either turns it over or makes a bad pass or 
or bricks it or or something. And he just plays like a damn bonehead. And then and after it, and this that, is he's after dejected. He, he, and then he gets dejected. And then he's quits. Yep. Because he can look at the coach and say, I did everything in my tool belt. I did everything in my arsenal. What am I supposed to do? What else uh, yeah. do I? And it's a play smarter. Play cleaner. Play Tim Rule's basketball. Play more confident. Right. And, and this if is. If you got two guys on you, what does that mean? Someone's open. Someone's open. Yeah. Ant figured that out this year, and that was the biggest thing, I think, that changed Ant's game. And I think this is maybe the best season of Cat's career. It is. I have to say, I love Cat for how much he's backed the state of Minnesota, how much he's committed to the Timberwolves. Cat just won social justice champion of the league. And just like at work, Ow. you wouldn't pick on an employee that's underperforming if you didn't believe they could do it all. Mm-hmm. Just like on a team. Right. We wouldn't be giving Cat shit if we didn't think he was capable of everything he is. He is. And I think he's underperforming. He's doing great. He's having a hell of a season. I still think he could do better. He did great in the Sun Series. Yep. He did great. Yep. And now I'm at the point again, and I said this a handful of episodes again, uh, ago, park his ass in the corner at this point. Let Nas do the driving. Park Cat's ass in the corner and let him splash threes. Because how many times was the lane fully clogged when Ant was trying to drive? Fully yep. clogged. Yep. And he goes into three people. Maybe got fouled on a couple, but they weren't calling it. Whatever. So you can and so Ant struggled too. Baby Daddy Gobi take over inside. Uh, yeah, keep Cat in the corner, and we got the I don't know. I By don't the way, this. was that actually true that some people asked him about his wife, and his girlfriend came out and made a statement that said "girlfriend" oh, very I, specifically. Oh, I didn't hear that. Um, is he married? I don't think so. Oh, well, he's only like what twenty four? He's thirty one. Jeez, Two? told you that last week actually. Who are we talking about? Rudy Gobi hmm. or Gobert. Sorbet. Oh, yeah. He's old. Nope. They are not married. They're not married? They are not married. They're not. He should have. Um, uh, so, yeah. At, mm. Up until yesterday, Wolves hadn't lost three in a row all season. Maybe you just bench him. First time for no. everything, right? Game, I like Gobi. Man, but game two was fine. I was going to say. Gobert is um, maybe the only uh, player on our team right now. Um, with a positive plus minus throughout the series. I don't know. Man. When we bench him, you they know go how, on runs. You know how sometimes spouses can gain sympathy pounds during a pregnancy? I think we gained sympathy mother strength from Gobert having a child that night, which is why we all played so well. Hmm. Had to have been. So he just needs to have another kid. Yeah. Think of how many kids <laughs> no, this, this he team has the been team producing and... babies all year long. <laughs> They just keep making babies. They've been impregnating people. A few of them yet to have their babies. Yep. Beginning of the season, they knew. They're like, this is baby year. If we get next season, if we get, no matter what happens this season, next next season we get Daddy Na and Daddy Jaden. Where's that statistic? What teams fathered the most children that year? And is it a direct correlation to who wins? <laughs> no, there, there are there are stat boosts where Because where, does that where create a get family that, structure um, that maybe allows this, them to go to practice more? Maybe allows them to focus more on the sport while mom stays home with the kids. There's something, and I think... Maybe a family structure is what changes the National Basketball Association. <laughs> a team, or a league, I should say, where majority of the players, correct me, come out of the, what, high school league? They don't even play college that much anymore. Um, I don't know if that, that's not allowed anymore. Never they, mind. they have to do a year of college. I wonder Or, or go to the G League. Yeah, one year removed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, nice try. But, but they you know, should get, get rid the of that. But. Sorry. They should. No, they totally should. I Doc, agree. you liked that. That evoked a little emotion out of you. Uh, I just, I just go. I, I KG I, I and Kobe. I can't talk about it. Why? KG and Kobe. I can't talk about it right now. Why? This is a safe space. It's not. <laughs> Why? No. It's not safe. It's not. No. So I shouldn't talk about my new Boeing conspiracy that I. Think no, you you should talk about whatever you want to talk that. about. Safe space for that for sure. I am under a contractual obligation. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say some stuff. You ever been on a watch list? Maybe. Probably. Because we're about <laughs> to. Maybe. Um, so, yeah. Um, Cat was uh, Cat was social justice champion. That's awesome. Ow. Good job, What does Kat. that mean? He's a great guy. Um, he philanthropized super hard this year. How? He makes people not think it's a thug league. Um, what did he, he do? Does. He, um, yeah, like like our, like our like few people from our corporate. Like, man. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to avoid. <laughs> I was just making a statement. It's still vague enough. I don't care. Bom, 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 bom. Bom, bom. As I was Sorry. saying, um, that leaves now um, Ant to get Finals MVP, and then we got the Sixth Man of the Year, the Defensive Player of the Year, the Teammate of the Year, the Social Can you Justice get Champion of MVP the Year, if you only and the Finals the MVP. Playoffs. If you what? Nothing. No, you have to make the Finals win the Finals. Okay, <laughs> yeah. You got to do that. Chickens and eggs, man. I hear you. 
Wolves in seven. Wolves in seven. Oh, that's right. Um, did you guys get your twenty dollars Nas Reed tattoos? You saw that? Yeah, I did not. You know, what, you want to know my last Black Friday special tattoo? You didn't see it? Or what? Wait, did I? Or you did shout? not get the tattoo? Hmm? Did I shout? Oh no, I, I don't. The ghost must have ran through me. I don't know what happened. This was my last Black Friday tattoo. It was supposed to be like a flash tattoo. So if you if you bring the mic towards the end of the table and then you can turn the mic inward. Nope, opposite. Up, yep, what you just did. Bring the mic towards. Now the cameras can't see my face. No, nope. Jack, can you see what I'm talking about? Yeah, bring it that way and turn the mic that way. See, open up your face. That's what I tried to do. You weren't. <laughs> and now you're pretty, pretty again. Um, <laughs> beloved beloved studios in Roseville, Minnesota. Was given twenty dollar Nas Reed tattoos, and then um, the the people who own the studio they got to, or maybe it's just one guy. See how to, good looking this guy is? Yes, I'm telling you. That's why I said, <laughs> quit blocking your face. Uh, they got to sit courtside. Yeah, Jeez. for all those, I'd like to see how much uh, they made for all that because all I saw was everyone getting those twenty dollar Nas Reed tattoos. Hey, you want to know something funny about Nas Reed? Man, you know how easy this that is. I was golfing with somebody. Right, exactly. That's easy work on Mother's Day weekend. And as we left, he was like, oh, shoot, man, I totally had a bunch of Nas Reed towels for you and your boys. And I went, damn. Mm. <laughs> he goes, yeah, hmm. we'll link up. I'm like, for sure, man. We'll link up. That. Thanksgiving's right around the corner. I will, <laughs> I will still give that a... Ow. Um, okay, here's to, uh, here's to game six, guys, tomorrow night. Let's go. Let's go. Um, other NBA news: The Pistons might be trying to poach our Tim Connolly. You guys are just scrolling. What happened? No, you guys each just we're doing. We're working. Sometimes you go on pitches and mm. rants that are super good for the show that our listeners love, and we have to answer the fans. Thanks, man. I'm trying to. Have you seen this? Pistons trying to poach Tim Connolly. Um, Pistons, fuck off. Fucking right, dude. Please, I want We're all selling the hoodies. That. We're selling that. All the hoodies with that. I see. It's the only yeah, treason it's if it's you lose. It's only treason if you lose. Oh. No, that's the Viking horn. Let's call. Um, Pat Beverly, four-game suspension. Texas, um, calling this, you this out. This league has gone soft. <laughs> Let's go, Texas. Florida, Louisiana, half of Louisiana's in, I promise. Oh, good for NBA. <clears throat> um... So are you for trading cat at, at uh, the end of the year? No. Okay. I just want him to get his head out of his button. Like he he just needs to know how to handle these big moments instead of putting your head down and driving into four people and thinking you're you can just out tough everyone. Just play smart. Play do what got you to the one seed damn near all season long, sweeping the Suns and taking two oh against the Nuggets. Do that. Yeah, because I mean the dude's making almost fifty million dollars a year, which is thirty three percent of your salary cap. <laughs> That's how, it, that's how the NBA works. But yeah. Well, well no, I understand you how the NBA acc- salary You get certain works. accolades. You, you get you get all pro nods. You get you get um, all star games. You warrant these max contracts. Oh no, I, you know, I I'm fine with max contracts, but not if you're not performing. Yep, I'm with you. I'm with you. But um, do you pay a guy a contract for how he's doing or his ceiling? Um, let's ask Jaden McDaniels. He did, Wait, he, is he a guest? Did we get J Mac? No, but <laughs> oh, that's so, how you keyed that up, dude. No, but the scenario. I was like, look just, at us go. Yeah, the, 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 cur- the, the, the scenario you presented is is what people are um, kind of thinking is what's going on with J. Because right he's now. due for a contract this year. No, right? he got his contract. Where oh. he's getting paid 120 mil, I think. Um, after this year, a game. Uh, no. Jeez. So uh, how many years? Five. I, mean, I probably... want to say it's like four or five for one twenty or one thirty or something like that. Um, well, it's only twenty million. So anyway, yeah, one of the best defenders in the league, maybe the best perimeter defender in the league, can guard one through four as good, if not better, than anyone. Um, has shown a lot of promise on the offensive end. Can go on these great three point shooting streaks, but he's been cold all playoffs long and most of the season too. Um, hasn't shown the growth that we were hoping for out of Jaden. I still love him, and that's the jersey I'm going to get. Me too, dude. I love J Mac too. That's not what I said. There's two J Max, so I see what you're doing there. But did you not? Pre- I'm sorry. What? I okay. 
A uh, man pleads guilty to Jackie Robert Robinson statue theft. Come on. He's like, I did it. It's in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Jesus. know if that's the actual story. I just thought that was a funny headline. The guy stole a statue. Those things are heavy. Yeah. I, you wonder how he did it. Did you see how small Allen Iverson's statue is? So Sid Hartman got a life size, right? Sid Hartman. He announced games for the Timberwolves for a little while. Outside Target Center. Hmm? Allen Iverson's. About hmm? the size of that Vikings helmet behind you. A little bit taller, maybe. His statue? Well, that's yeah, actual, him just crossing. Actual size. Well, if it's him doing a sweet crossover, it's a little sweet statue. Come on. So, life man. size. Come on. <laughs> I felt bad. Like, it was the size of a bus, but it was a full body. Is this the same cat that it's did or did cat. not mess with wires last time? <laughs> yeah, this cat, this son of a <laughs> bitch. <laughs> oh, God. Damn. <laughs> oh! Bob Barker's going to come back from death for that. Learn, Learn Kitty. Oh, my man, God. I'm not risking that again. Damn, Drew Carey reminding everyone to spay and neuter your pets as soon as you get them. Jesus. Eliminate their reproduction abilities. Oh you guys, God. hey, new Lord of the Ring movies. Loader? New Loaders, 2026. Soder loves Loader. Are we remaking? Produced by Pete Jackson. Pete Jack. Pete Jack. I don't know who that is. He's the director of The Ridge. Come on, man. Um, uh, directed Andy Serkis. Seriously? Doc. From SNL? Nope. Oh. That's Jason Sudeikis. Andy Serkis is Doc. Gollum. <gasps> yeah. It's Gollum. Wow. Yeah. Really? Why, yeah, why he's, he's been, fuck he's, he's he's been dabbling in directing because you know movies so well. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. I can't wait. Are they re- wait. Are, is it a remake? No, I, not that I... Here, let's find out, right? Find out. Oh, I'm getting redirected to my article in 10 seconds. Thanks, Hollywood Reporter. No, oh, the hilarious Abbott Elementary. Stop it. Three, two, one. Can I have my article? <laughs> Sounds awful, by the way. You guys are going to give that to all You guys are going to give that to all of our listeners? We both made rocket sounds. <laughs> Sounds terrible. Did we just become best friends? No. Wait, we did that. Yeah. Like, what episode are we on now? <laughs> Cripes. Uh, 30, Have we done a year of this crap? Because my 34. I swear Instagram now is like, hey, a year ago you guys were making a video of look at our studio. No, we haven't. Peter Jackson working on new Lord of the Rings films for Warner Brothers targeting 2026 debut. Um, now in the early stages of script development. For the new Lord of the Rings movies. What does which that mean? He says, Some guy talked about writing Which he says they, quote, <laughs> anticipate releasing <laughs> yeah. in 2026 will explore storylines yet to be told. Oh, nice. New. That's great. Love it. That is per The Hollywood Dude, Report. Dude, my dad's in early script development yeah. right now. Good. I know. I can't wait, actually. He won't let me see it. Good for him. Pissed. No, that's great. Um, ooh. Brad Pitt's next movie. Sody. Yeah. I like this. Brad Pitt's next movie. Reportedly... One of the most expensive ever made. What do you think it's about? Brad um, Pitt's next movie, Fight Club. Formula One. He's a Formula One driver. Sick. Mm-hmm. That's all I know about it. And is it's supposed he, to be crazy uh, expensive. But... Is he Kevin Magnuson? <laughs> yeah, I could see it. Because that'd be awesome, where he just crashes all the time. <laughs> He's the only American team, and they're like, listen, man, we have to have a car out here. They even tried to fire him. Remember that season they fired him? Like, you got to stop crashing or shit. Yeah. And Kevin's like, listen, man, you can't find no one better. You can't, you, you'll call me. And they're like, no, we'll never call you again, dude. You've cost us millions of dollars in damage. Luckily, we make the greatest automated precision and machining machines the world has ever seen. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to afford you. A month later, like, hey, Kevin, what are you doing? Oh, <laughs> you want me to crash more cars? Okay, I come back. Yeah. And he did. He did. He kept crashing. Dude doesn't give up. And I love it. Speaking of crashes. A Trans Air Boeing 737 skids off a runway? <laughs> oh. You don't want it. What? You want, do you want to go on the list now, or do you want that to be premium content? It's another Can tease. tease it? It's another tease. Because. Can you see how worked up he is? Dude, this is not. Huh? Find out more on our Patreon. That's right. You know That's who, right. You know who flies in a Boeing? A lot. Yep. Mm. Great. Okay. Hi. Have uh, something that I just I just came across and I decided was pretty interesting actually. Um, 
What I is don't it? remember sending you that picture. Tell us about it right now. A different picture. You guys know the story the story of Otto Warm Beer? Warm Beer, I think is how you say it. Did he produce alcohol inside his own stomach? Because we No, and it's, it's W-A-R-M-B-I-E-R, so I think Warm Beer. But just... I don't beer. like Warm Beer. Nobody does, right? Um, neither of you are familiar with Otto Warm Beer? Okay, well, here's Otto Warm Beer's story. Yeah. Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Otto Warmbier was scheduled to take a study abroad program in Hong Kong in early 2016. He decided to visit North Korea en route during the New Year period. Nope. So, first mistake, right? Going to North Korea. Um, it was supposed to be just a five-day New Year t- uh, tour <laughs> around North Korea. A five-day tour that became over a year of imprisonment and torture. Yeah. Whoa! Torture? That's right. That's not cool. Nope. After a night of celebrating New Year's by carousing around Kim Il-sung Square, him and his group of other fellow tourists returned to the Yangkakdo International Hotel. Man, you... No, oh, that's all I'm sorry up. if that was bad. It was a New Year's Day. It was New Year's Day on um, at 2 a.m. A security camera allegedly captured him stealing a propaganda poster off the wall of an employee area. Nothing else happened over the next few days of Otto stay in North Korea until the day he was meant to leave. On January 2nd, 2016... Him and his group of fellow tourists were awaiting departure from North Korea at Pyongyang International Airport. Got that one right. Um, nice. <laughs> yep. That was when Otto Warmbier was arrested by North Korean officials. The following is an eyewitness account from a British member of Warmbier's tour group. Quote, no words were spoken. Two guards came over and simply tapped Otto on the shoulder and led him away. I just said kind of quite nervously, well, that's the last we'll ever see of you. <laughs> <laughs> There's great irony in those words because that was it. That was the last physical time I saw Otto, ever. Otto didn't resist. He didn't look scared. He sort of half smiled. This audio bit is is, uh, Otto uh, begging for forgiveness in court. He, uh, He walks in with his head down, arms at his side, or arms folded in front of him, like I assume he was told to do. I planned in detail to accomplish my plan. I arrived in Pyongyang on December 29th, 2015, through Beijing. On the early morning of January 1st, 2016, I committed my crime of taking out the important political slogan so from the staff-only area of the Yangokdo International Hotel. I can't pronounce that. Voice. Aimed at harming the work ethic and the motivation of the Korean people. After committing my crime against the people and government of the DPR Korea, I was detained on January 2nd, 2016 at the Pyongyang International Airport. I have been very impressed by the Korean government's humanitarian treatment of severe criminals like myself. Severe criminals? And of their very fair and square legal procedures in the DPR Korea. Sounds a little sarcastic. I understand the severity of my crime, and I have no idea what sort of penalty I may face. Fifteen I years. Begging is what to the Korean to. people and government for my forgiveness, and I am praying to the heavens so that I may be returned home to my family. Then he stands up and starts begging, as I assume he was told to do. Yeah. Um, after over a year of being trapped in North Korea, Korea, Otto returned to America in a vegetative state. He died June 19th, 2017, um, after his parents requested the doctors remove his feeding tube. Wait, one more time. After over a year being trapped in North Korea, Otto returned to America in a vegetative state. He died June 19th, 2017, after his parents requested the doctors remove his feeding tube. They just gave him back to us? Yeah. They said, look what happened. Look what we did, because he took a poster. Let's nuke them. Yeah, that's that's a that's a country where I'd be like, great, like let's do our best for like an evacuation effort, maybe, even though they're all brainwashed anyway. But let's start over. over I, I'd vote it's, for Biden if he nuked them right now. Let's just start over because whatever's happening whoa. over there is absolutely whoa. just fucking is, hit whoa. that button. Whoa, you got to make sure he knows what button he's hitting first, dude. Yeah, you might get it wrong. Make sure he aims it in the right direction. Someone's gonna do that for him. Okay, he's gonna lick his ice cream cone, hit the button. Mm-hmm. I'd say, well, that's some good ice cream. 
Now, which way do I walk? <laughs> oh, I just thought that was uh, crazy. Just a reminder that North Korea sucks. <laughs> Crazy's a word. Yeah, right? Mm. And um, we just need to make sure we never go there now, because I'm sure they can hear this. Well, no, I would. why would right, you ever yeah. go there? That's what I'm saying. You go there for New Year's when you were already, like, in Beijing. Dude, you're not going to be able to go to Caribou when I talk about what about <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that. Okay. All right, good. Oh, sweet. The guy, the, the information I'm getting from, he... He covers himself up as Sonic because Sonic Sonic doesn't want to be. <laughs> Why are you going to say it? I don't know. Get famous, man. That's funny. Aren't we trying to publicize ourselves? Something. Anyways, if you want to hear stuff that's going to get us blacklisted, like and subscribe. <laughs> Five bucks a month. Listen Patreon. To, listen to Sody all you want. It's good stuff. That's it? Five? Yeah, that's all. That's I thought all. it was like at least like six, it's less than Less than a damn Big Mac these days. Yeah. Um, Fallout series, officially Amazon's most successful ever. Check it out. It's That's great. not hard, isn't it? What else I know they're Amazon relatively do? new to series, but they've done a lot of stuff. Well, I guess they do the Handmaid's Tale. No, that was Hulu, wasn't it? Maybe. Oh right. no, am I really against Hulu? I think it is Hulu. Sody, help us out. He doesn't know. You're not participating. Looks like it, there's an 86 percent chance. Yes, Hulu is <laughs> the carrier of that show you're mentioning. Say it in the dang Sweet. mic. 86 percent chance Hulu is the carrier of a Queen's Gambit. You know, you had all, you had all, you had all, <laughs> it's not even the right show. It's not even the show we were talking about. So you had, all, you had all week to scribble on your little fucking notepad. <laughs> no, I didn't. My notepad was here. It's the only notepad you have. And plus, he's he's busy. He's climbing ladders. So, what do you think about autonomous F sixteen fighters to housewives showing comparable, if not superior, results to actual pilots? I think it's great. Take the guys out of there so they can go home to their families after their aircraft malfunctions. Because yeah, but not if Tom Cruise has anything to say about it in Top Gun Two. What do you mean? That's that's kind of what happens in Top Gun 2. What happens? They have to pull pull off something that a pilot should not be able to because of the G's. Yeah. Tom Cruise does it, though. Yeah. Well, it's because it's Tom Cruise. Well, that's because there, He's got there, the power are, there are situations where a human still sure. is the best option. Okay. There that's is like a- you can auto- automate the freaking Google you know, street view car while that drives around. That's cool. But the guy driving an M1 Abram tank that's defending my capital, I'd prefer that to be... A dude. Oh, sorry. Any soldier. A robot. <laughs> any soldier of flesh and blood. Yeah. Somebody that makes cognitive decisions. Yeah. Somebody that doesn't say, this isn't worth saving. I don't know. The new chat GPT came out with new AI, and it's nuts. So, yeah, who knows, right? Well, we're all just in a simulation anyways. Yeah, for real. I mean, is you it, brought up going to the grocery store earlier. I sure did. Have you ever seen your grocery or your neighbor bring in groceries? You son of a biscuit. What? Yeah, you never have. No. You've never seen your neighbor bring in groceries. You know why? Do you know why, though? Because that is not something that's important enough to be a part of your simulation. Stop. 100%. (laughs) Stop. I I, I need to come up with it. Stop. You've never... (laughs) Stop. Think of all these houses. All of them. You've never seen a single one of them bringing in grocery bags. You've never done it. I need you to stop so I can think of a damn time where I've seen... We'll wait. I'll wait. Sony's had Sony's my very sweet elderly next door neighbor. Yeah, like kitty litter and paper towels. No, you never seen nah, food dude, in there, did you? Never, you never. Because she's not real, bro. Sony's she's, not even real. She's just an NPC, man. She's an NPC. Wouldn't that, mean, wouldn't that mean we're NPCs? No, absolutely so not. So no, nobody has seen us bring groceries in. We are main characters. So listen, there is a scenario where you do see somebody bringing groceries, but it's because. That person is an integrated enough part of your story where it's necessary for you to see them as that realism. Yeah, you're going to need that. You guys are that. freaking me out. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, pour yourself another drink because you've never seen it. Yep. Behind, behind the back. Sody, had you heard that before? Because you jumped on agreeing with him super fast. Yes, 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 yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, heard that theory. Thank you. Immediately. Why do you try to hide the bottle? What do you mean? You're shamed? No, we can't advertise. <laughs> can't advertise, dude. You can advertise a glass with booze in it. They're not paying us. They ain't paying us. That's fine. Look at look at this. Been well, the, sh- he's been doing this the, whole damn time. They're the official, unofficial fast food sponsor. We like their ice. They do got nice ice. But yes, George. Yeah. If you have seen someone carrying groceries, let me ask you this: You ever? When's the last time you saw your parents carry groceries? It's a childhood memory, right? Which are pre-downloaded. Okay. Sure. 
I feel like it's just not important enough. That sounded hilarious. <laughs> I feel like it's just not important enough for us to remember or store. Exactly. If it's not integral enough to be part of your story, you won't see it. You won't see it. Does yeah. that mean it didn't happen, though? No, but think of when you see somebody doing minute things, when you're driving by and you see it, right? Mm-hmm. If you notice it and it sticks out to you, it's for a reason. It resonates with you somehow. Sure. You will pass people doing all kinds of shit all day long. 40 people just going down one street. Sometimes, if it's busy. Mm-hmm. You don't remember a single thing they did. Right. Did you hardly remember but what if, you're if, doing when you're if driving? If somebody was outside, let's say, raking the yard, and there's a white cat in the yard that resembles your cat, you're going to remember that, right? Because it resonates with you. It hits mm-hmm. with your story, part of your simulation. Okay. Yeah, yeah but like, I mean, like, so seriously. So this is my simulation? What's it, how, why is my simulation different from your guys's? What do you mean? This is not one big simulation. No, we are all... Have you seen Matrix? Yeah. We're all plugged into the same hard drive, bro. Yeah, we're all in little eggs. But there are a lot of NPCs out here. Have you met people in your life? Not, sorry. It's not like they know who they are. Oh, there's like don't. four a day at the hotel. Yes. They are here to merely make, it, us? make it feel real. So is this a test? Is this like, or like a study? Are we being studied? Well, technically it's a farm for souls. Because in a fifth and fourth dimensional state, which is where this world right. actually you gotta, exists. You think about folding the paper and then folding it again and then folding it again. Stabbing through it with a pencil and then the thing that sticks right on the edge of the mm-hmm. freaking lead. Yeah. That's a soul, man. There you go. And it passes Jesus. through when you blow it through the other side. <laughs> so what, let me ask you this then. What kind of bullshit simulation are we living in when Steve Buscemi can't walk down the streets in New York without getting punched in the face? He got punched in the face? He got punched in the face. Why? He's fine. Was well, it because yeah, they why? thought he was actually Nucky Thompson? Because Nucky Thompson did some <laughs> wild shit. That could be. He was. Maybe that's the case. Dude, he was a criminal. Is this a guy on a little bit of drugs being like that motherfucker? Name this movie. Mother- I'm a criminal. Ain't nobody giving me no fucking job. Blow. Boston oh, George. He's out now, by the way, isn't he? I don't know. Boston George? Not familiar. Hmm. Another famous movie line. When he quotes uh, Johnny Cash. Said you're looking for uh, someone to blame it on, but it ain't me, babe. It ain't me. As he's being tried for bringing, oh, no, no, yep, tons of tons of freaking weed over over from Mexico, right? And he says, "What are you getting me for? I brought a bunch of plants over to imaginary line. You're looking for a criminal, but it ain't me, babe." And I love how she comes back and goes, "Well, unfortunately for you, Mister George, the plants you brought were illegal, and that line's very real. So you're doing ten to twelve. <laughs> Got him." And he's like, ah. <laughs> "Damn it!" <laughs> really good speech, though. For but sure. he's out now. Did Good. you uh did you see Dan Quinn's shirt he wore recently? No at a press conference. Really? Who's he coaching for these days? The, the uh, Washington Commanders. He is. Is he head coach now? Yeah, he got head coach. That's yeah. right. Okay. So it's uh it's your typical Washington Commanders shirt with the W. Washington. Yeah. Can we get that on a shirt? Sure. And then it says Commanders, but then there's feathers hanging off the W for the throwback. Interesting. Make it Warriors. Just make it Warriors. Make it stop warriors. screwing around. Well, the Warriors already exist in a basketball setting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Do the hey. Kings already exist? Okay, good point. Somewhere? So, but right? also, Golden State just got a WNBA team. The yeah, Capitals? The, the Valkyries. The Valkyries. Val- yeah, Valkyries. Wait, how many teams are in multiple sports? Capitals? Hockey? I just want you to acknowledge how cool that team name is. The Valkyrie? Yeah. Isn't that great? It is cool. It's obviously, it's Nordic... It's almost it's as good as the Caucasians. I have a Valkyrie tattooed on my flesh. I think it's... <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't even notice. Yes. You never notice this. <laughs> oh! Oh, I want one. Speaking of controversial football... <laughs> I want one. In this dead season of the NFL that we are that we are just coming into the middle of... I'm anything but Sad offended. time for everyone. <laughs> There's still some stories. I'm proud of that. There's yeah. still some stories. I want one. I'll, I'll get you one. Um, Harrison Bucker. Shouldn't use the P word. That guy, Buckner, what'd he do? Butner. Butker. Butker. Um Proud. you know, just uh gave a gave a speech at a gave a commencement. Campy. Um at a at a college graduation. And <laughs> this guy's not proud. And We're just good. uh that's why he's forty percent. Yep. And uh keep steering the boat. I'm glad. And you're es- essentially just told women get uh get back in the kitchen. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm not so glad you're driving anymore. What happened? You <laughs> this turned. Is, this yeah. is Harrison you Bucker. You turned really sharp You're right not there. listening. It's Harrison Bucker's words. Yeah, it's not Alex's Come on. word. <laughs> Jesus. Harrison Bucker. He's got to listen. Sorry. So. He said, most of you women graduating are, are probably looking forward and more proud of becoming mothers and wives 
instead of climbing the corporate ladder. Bucker recently delivered the commencement address at Benedictine College, a liberal arts institution in Atchison, Kansas. Wait a minute, I'd like to talk about this. This is. Let me get a few more pieces of information out so cool your damn jets. This is the same college that once forced out gay basketball player um, Jalen Messersmith. Okay, didn't yeah, because uh, they're dude, they're heavily. It's a it's a Catholic college. So here's here's what uh, Mr. Bucker says. I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolic lies told to you. Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. Yeah. I can tell you that my beautiful wife, Isabel, will be the first to say her life truly started when she started living her vocation as a wife and as a mother. I'm on the stage today, able to be the man that I am, because I have a wife who leans into that vocation. And he has a strong right leg. I'm beyond blessed with the many talents God has given me, but it cannot be overstated that all my success is made possible because a girl I met in band class back in middle school would convert to the faith, become my wife, and embrace one of the most important titles of all, homemaker. Like Theo Vaughn once said, man, I'm just out here looking for the Lord. Yeah. Then, Bucker got to what he termed the dangers of the Church of Nice. The world around us says that we should keep our beliefs to ourselves whenever they go against the tyranny of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I'm going to stop right there. Wait, the Church of Nice. Yep. But I'm going to stop right there. (laughs) Diversity, equity, and inclusion. So tyrannical. Those are terrible things. Absolutely. Just tyrannical, awful things. What the fuck is this guy talking about? Chiefs, uh, Chiefs, you were on a roll. And if that wasn't enough, Rasheed Rice um, just got uh, another thing for punching another dude in a restaurant. Yeah. What are you doing, Chiefs? Like you, you are a like you're a dynasty, but you, they you, officially have no comment on this. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Like you suck. Like quit. Does you guys want to go to church? Just hate when there's people like this getting paid millions. You guys want to go to church Sunday? You know, like ninety percent of people have never been invited to church. Have you guys ever been invited? To, uh, Georgia, I know you went to church. That's how I met your ass. You're good. Preschool. Doc, have you ever been invited to church? You're, you're Catholic, aren't you? Yawn. Mm-mm. Catholic light, Lutheran, like me? Mm-mm. Not you guys, denominational. Uh, are you guys... Not denominational? Free church, dude. Mm-hmm. Getting hippie shit. I love it. Hell yeah. Are you guys yeah, man. scoffing at Goff? That, damn no. It, that, mm. that was supposed to be better. Scoff at Goff's contract? No, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, good job, Lions. You got it done. He's <laughs> he's your quarterback. People are I see people hating on it. Right away, Second right time nailed it. Yeah. Anyway. Um Jared Goff signs um super big contract. How big? Four year two twelve mil. Dang. One seventy guaranteed. One seventy guaranteed. He just made 170 mil. No matter what. Good job, Jared. So let me ask you this. Be honest. Be honest. You get a four year contract, 170 million guaranteed. My knee might blow out. I practice. hope my yeah. fucking knee <laughs> right. snaps in Are you half. kidding me? Snaps in half, and I can never play again. And I'm a coach. I'm just sitting there with a clipboard on the sideline on Sundays and on Saturdays, you know, watching college football. Friday nights, maybe helping out the high school team. Yeah. But I'm sitting there going, shoot, what are the odds, guys? All that money. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna, okay. All that money. Okay, here's the scenario. You're going to get paid five mil to be, to be in the NFL. What position are you? You can't be backup quarterback or kicker or punter. What position am I? Yep. If you have to go in the NFL because you're going to make five mil, you can't be one of those three. You can't be a backup. Um, Jeez. You're not backup QB. You're well, not kicker. You're not punter. I want to play something I played in high school, which would be like D-line, O-line, or fullback, well, long or snapper. linebacker. Long snapper? No. Didn't you do that? Not well. Oh, it doesn't matter, right? I remember, this is I remember, hyper, this I remember they wanted me to do it, and then some guy with about a third of my body mass could throw it way better than like, yeah, we'll just risk it. You just stand next to him. Yep. You kind of just put a foot behind his, put your butt cheek behind his hip. You can hold him. I won't bring up his name, but you remember the guy we played with? A little undersized. And I'll never forget, we had an amazing announcer, uh, actually a friend of, or oh, a yes, father, yes, a father great. of a teammate this that was on the great. team. But oh, we'll, do, we'll just call him DD. We're, 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 fa- we're, we're facing, we're facing the, the big ass Catholic school who destroys, who destroys the, uh, Tatino, I the entire uh, district. Yeah, Totino Grace. Yeah, because they didn't recruit players. Of course no. not, right? No, they, they fly in from other states and they stay with family friends long enough yeah. where their address changes so they can play for them. Yeah. 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 But they're from Georgia. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, yeah. There's a quick little screen pass outside. <laughs> this dude is tenth grade to their big ass running back, six foot five. It was a bubble to their running back. Runs a four three. 
and he's 212 pounds. Yeah. 2% body fat. In high school. He's up the sideline. Well, well, hold up. DD's measurements are probably somewhere around. DD's 5'2", 90, <laughs> 96 with pads, cleats, and somebody else laying on but top. Damn it, he is our starting cornerback because he plays with heart. He's got heart. He's got heart. He does. Yep. That is, the, that is the kid that will come back to the defensive Ow. huddle with tears in your eyes. And I was an underperforming DN. I'm like, you fucking crying? <laughs> He'd be like, no. I'm like, oh, man, this guy's got hurt. Yeah, he anyway. But, yeah. Bubble to the big-ass running Bubble back. Bubble back to the tower. Bubble back to the tower. <laughs> the tower's running up the sideline. DD's the only thing standing in his way. Yep. <laughs> DD runs straight at him, realizes the mistake he's made. Stops. Yep. Hits the brakes, squares up, gets low, because low man wins, right? Yeah. yeah. But the, then froze. Froze. Dude put a forearm out directly into the front of his face mask and scorpioned DD. Yeah. Scorpioned him into the ground. As he flailed to the ground on a different side <laughs> that he started making the tackle on, the, running back the tower over trips over, over the flailed limbs flying across like a tumbleweed. Out of bounds falls. The announcer, after some, after you hear a few parents go, ooh. <laughs> you hear the announcer go, you know, big hit by DD to, <laughs> to stop a potential touchdown. Man, we love that guy. He's, he's always sticking his... Oh, man. That, was a, that was a 10th grade football man. We're all sitting there going, check on him. Like, <laughs> check, where, check on where's him. Where's the ice guy? Go he's check hurt. on DD. Check on he's hurt. Yep. A good story. I forgot about that. Yeah, man. And then you had what? Well, we had our friend D.Y. Mm. Who his? I remember his practice jersey scared me the most. Not the odor, it was the appearance. The it was holes. ripped to shreds. Yeah. And there was a lot more red than we had painted on a field where yeah. our team colors were blue and white. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what is that? Man, it's blood. It's, it's other people's blood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is. Nice. And I, I play with these guys. I'm like, where is he getting so much blood on him? He plays on the defense behind me. Yeah. If somebody made it past like the like D line linebackers, it was like, yeah, shoot, here comes Derek. Yeah, he's risking his life to hit you hard. Yeah, Derek. <laughs> Derek, the best thing Derek can do is hurt you so hard where his parents say no more football. Derek, go, oh shit, no way. Oh dang, more wakeboarding? <laughs> no. Yeah, more dude. outside? Yeah. Yep. More yeah. structured sports? Man, we had a guy like that. He Everybody's got just... one. Everybody's got one. Nah, Ooh. free spirit, man. He was good at everything he tried yeah, at, and that was what's true. fun to watch. Very true. Mm. Yep. Um, speaking of high contracts, Antron Winfield Jr. could have drafted him, didn't. Um, highest paid safety of all time, four years, 84.1 mil. Who's that? Let's go. I give the applause because his father is one of from? my favorite uh, Vikings well, of all time. Well, hang on. A.W. Jr. from <laughs> A.W. Um, he's from U of M, Gophers. Row the boat, Sky Uma, go Gophers. In Fleck, we trust. True. True, true, true. Do you guys see, um... You done with PJ? So, uh, uh, Zeke Elliott back on the Cowboys? Yep, it's like he never left. Do you see Coach McCarthy? I'm sorry. What what coach loves most about having <laughs> Zeke back? Um, it's getting slapped in the ass. It's getting slapped in the, in the ass. He missed so, so this quote from, from Mike McCarthy. The best part about this is he could he was asked, what's it like having Zeke back? He could have just said it's been good. Could have just said it's been good. He didn't. Instead, he's an old school guy. He'll go up and smack a 60-year-old man in the ass and it hurts. It's those kind of things that you just enjoy him. Not that I enjoy getting smacked on the ass. Mike, he could have just said it's been good. Now you're fucking weird. Oh, that's, that's cool, man. He's Mike, Mike McCarthy. McCarthy. Did you? You were. That was good, guys. Weren't you, you were, weren't you happy to be rid of him? Uh, yeah. 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 NFL on Netflix. Coming at you two times. Two times. Doubleheader. Christmas doubleheader on Netflix. On I got the a, Lord's Day. I got to resubscribe to Netflix. Wait, you stopped? Do we know what those games are? Um. Yeah, we do. Hey, did you confirm schedule's out? No. Tonight. Exactly. Eight tonight. o'clock. Can't wait to talk about it. We'll go pick by pick. And, and I will be just right. wait for you to get it right again. Injuries aside, man, I swear. Yeah, dude, give it up. I was right. Yeah, but not in the right way. I, was not, I right? You got the numbers right. That's all that matters for the wrong reasons. No. Yes. Netflix's doubleheader will showcase the 
criminal Kansas City Chiefs against the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> Nailed that's, it. Yeah, that's great. Nailed it. Followed up by the Baltimore Ravens and the Houston Texans. There you go. Those would be good games. Maybe not Steelers. Steelers might not be good, but... Oh, my gosh. Netflix's lame-ass tweet. You can't spell Netflix without NFL. <laughs> Jesus. Lame. Can't, though. We could have done better. Oh, Facts. Did you God. make that post? On God, fam. No cap. You cannot. <laughs> All caps. All caps. Well. A um, few bits of uh, Vikes news. You guys remember uh, our... Uh, are very, what should I say? Um, I don't know. What is he to us? He's our. Uh, I remember when he used to. Have he's our captain. Breaks. He's yeah. our captain, Quessy, Captain Quessy. Yeah, and Quessy we trust. Do you remember his very first two draft picks? Yeah. Both in danger of getting cut before the season even starts. Yeah. Lewis seen Andrew Booth Jr. Yeah. Sign. This is a it's tweet. Lewis sign. Uh, per Charlie Walters, the Vikings' 22 first-round pick safety Lewis Seen and, 20, and 2022 second-round cornerback oh Andrew Booth Jr. are likely to be waived in training camp. Lewis, sign. Um, what do you mean by waived? Like, waived when like they the, walk in? I like hey. both drafts after this one, but man, what, what a bad way to start out your regime, Quessy. Hey, hopefully they figure it out, right? You heard that too, right? What was that? That was a skull horn. That wasn't you? That was a skull horn. Um, no, dude. <laughs> that was creepy. What was that? No, it's all right. Okay. Um, before we wrap it up, um, we're just going to skull a few more times. We always wrap it up. We're just going to... True. We're just going to skull a few more times. Um, because it's happening. J.J. McCarthy on the first day of minicamp. Nothing overwhelming. Didn't feel like my first day. He's it. This is the guy. <laughs> Did you see him miss, damn guy. miss the coach? Did yeah. you? Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. yeah, but hey. All right. Wasn't overwhelmed on the first day of minicamp. Guy. First day of minicamp, not overwhelmed. Let's go. Let's go. He's not over the head. It's not over the head. It's. <laughs> yeah, man. But he'll get there. He'll get there. It's close, right? He's He's totally going to get there. He is totally going to get there. School Vikes. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. God. Exactly. God. Thank you, God. It's been an That's going to get edited out. What? Not, not no. in our show. That's the... Okay. I missed it. Because that's what know? every major network does. Do you know the Pledge of Allegiance? It says, thank you, God? No, they edit God out. Yeah, man. Oh, right. Oh, when okay. players say... It's true. Not us. Hmm. He didn't even talk about Kate and Clark's debut. 20 points. Yeah. 10 turnovers. Yeah, 10 turnovers. <laughs> Shot less than 50%. Baker Mayfield did Got somewhere. locked up a little bit in the first half. But she's looking good. She's going to so come right around. Brady yeah, go. there you go. Yeah. No. Do you guys see the WNBA underwear shoot? No. It's good. Oh, okay. Check it out. That's on, a your own, second, on your own time. A little second office reading material. On your own time. Yeah, second office reading material. Exactly. That's so right. Um, let's see. What else? Nope. That's all I got. Check out our Patreon. Patreon. Check Patreon. out the Patreon. shot. The second Get some office. sweet t-shirts. T-shirts, hoodies. Look at this awesome hoodie. It's so comfy and warm. And I'm about to try it out on the fireside this weekend at the cabin. Mm. So, what do you got? Say goodbye. You got hail damage?